Hello, my name is Tiffany. Welcome to my home. I am the dyer and maker behind Lata Valley Fiber Co. You can follow me on Instagram at Lata Valley Fiber Co. You can, if you'd like to check out my shop, you can do that at latavalleyfiberco.etsy.com. How are you all doing today? I hope you're doing well and you're busy making things. We've hit September, so I'm dreaming of all the things to do, uh, to make, to spin. Um, I am actually have been spinning this week, so I wanna show you a little bit of that, as well as some projects I'm working on, some things that I would like to cast on, as well as this beautiful cardigan that I finished uh, last week. Well, this is my lovely cardigan that I finished. This pattern is by Nitty McPurley and it's called the Potomac Worsted. It is, it was a lovely pattern to do. It was very um, intuitive. I didn't have any problems following her directions and I feel like even a beginner knitter could do uh, this pattern very easily. There were a couple modifications that I did. Um, so I'll walk you through that a little bit here. Um, I did use my own hand dyed worsted weight yarn in my superwash merino base. And um, I, let's see, I did for the body, I used two balls and just al alternated every every row I alternated every row knitting from one ball or the other so that there was no pooling in case you know with hand dyed yarn um, the likelihood of there being a little bit of pooling is possible so I alternated I did not do that for the sleeves I just put one ball um, for this sleeve and one ball for the sleeve and that was fine I used five skeins of yarn although I had budgeted for six skeins of yarn and it was pretty close. I had just a smidgen left, like maybe five grams. I mean, it was so minuscule, <laughs> um, but I didn't open into that um, sixth skein of yarn. So maybe I'll put it on my shop or knit a hat with it. Um, I also did, um, not decrease on the sleeves. I don't like my sleeves to be super snug against my arm, especially if I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt underneath. Um, I like there to be a little bit of room. So I didn't do any of the decreases on the underarm. I also extended the cuff. Um, I basically doubled the size of the cuff, I would say. Um, it was supposed to start about here and I wanted a little bit longer cuff one that kind of pulled in a little bit um did I decrease I might have decreased one or two stitches can't actually remember to kind of help with the cinching in effect and I did a one by one rib which I think she called for a two by two rib actually so I did a one by one and I did a um, a different bind off because I liked it a little bit better. I actually tried out the Italian bind off, um, which just makes it really smooth and elegant kind of, uh, rolls at the edge. So it just looks like it keeps going. Um, yeah. And then for the, I haven't blocked this yet. I don't think my blocking mats are big enough, but um, I'm going to try it. I don't really want to do a whole lot of blocking, just, um, blocking it around. As you can see, it doesn't really, um, come in. I'd like it to sit about here. So, um, there's a lot of fabric right here. So I feel like if it came in a little bit, it would help to even this out. Um, actually on both sides. So um, in the blocking, I'm gonna try and do that. I also went several inches shorter 
on the um, length because I wanted it to hit just about the middle of my butt. Um, and it, this is super wash, so it's going to stretch a little bit. Um, her recommendation with blocking is that you steam block um, if you don't want a whole lot of growth, with, especially if you're using superwash. So I will attempt to do that, I think. Although the body around will probably need to be blocked fully. You know, I don't know, but we'll see. I'm not gonna over block. Um, I'm very excited to wear this uh, cardigan. It is warm and comfortable. Oh, there's another modification that I left out and that is the pockets. Now, I did my gauge swatch by doing the pockets first and then putting them aside and knitting the rest of the cardigan. I did stitch on one pocket almost completely on. And then as I was looking at it, I decided, you know, I don't want to put the pockets on. Which is funny because um, one of the draws to this cardigan was that it had pockets. Um, so, but once I got there to the, that was the last step I did was to place the pockets on. I just felt like it looked a little frumpy for me. Um, so I totally um, uh, disregarded the pockets and I'll show you some pictures here. I'll insert them here so that you can look at the full body um, and go from there. So if you guys are interested in doing the Potomac Worsted Cardigan, I highly recommend it. It was a quick, well, it was a fairly quick knit um, because you're using the worsted weight yarn. It goes pretty fast. You get a lot accomplished. Um, I was knitting a bunch of different things all at the same time. So um, my, um, I was busy. I was knitting some work socks and um, some other things I had, I think. So anyway, it's done now and I'm, anticipating casting on for another uh, pullover or sweater. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Let's talk about that. This is it for finished objects. So let's move on to um, things I'm working on. Last year, I knit, um, several hats for the security team at church. And I had a little bit left over of this one hat and then I ran out of yarn. And it was okay because it was going to be an extra hat. So I last week ran down to the yarn store and this is a different yarn store local to me. Um, it's called Hook and Needle and needle I believe if that's wrong I'll post it here um, and they carry this Quinson Queensland worsted yarn and I've already thrown the tag away that's terrible okay so this is the hat I am doing the um, oh goodness See, this is what happens when you don't write things down. This is the watch cap hat by Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern. You can find it on their website. I knit and then ran out right about here. And you can kind of see, maybe you can't. I can tell that they're not from the same lot of yarn. There's just this slight, this is a little bit darker, this section here. So I was here and I ran out, so um, I set it aside and then, um, you know, it's been months, <laughs> almost 11 months since I knit this or started knitting it. So I picked up another skein 
and I'll probably have enough for another hat. Um, and then I just carried on and I'm in the decrease at the crown. So I'm almost done with it. And then um, I'll block, I'll weave in the ends. They're actually really nice if you get the opportunity to knit that pearl Soho watch cap hat pattern. It's very, um, yeah, it's just mindless. It's a lot of uh, knitting and purling and rib. Um, so yeah, it's very pretty. Maybe I'll keep it for myself. And hey, it might go with my cardigan, actually. I don't know, might be. Okay, so that I'm working on um, and should have it done by this weekend. Oh, the needle size I'm using. This is worsted weight yarn, but I am using a 3.25 because I like the, um, the density of the fabric. So that's the reason. I think it recommended actually a four millimeter, but, um, or maybe even a six. And I can't remember how much I cast on because again, this was last year. Okay. The next thing I'm working on is a pair of socks, color work socks actually. And this is also a free pattern. It's the Hokey Pokey Socks by Drops Design. Um, oh, and this comes in a mitten um, as well. I, I'll just post a picture here. I printed out the pattern and then um, I'm doing, the only thing I'm following is the chart, which is this section here. No, yes, it is on this side, right here. Um, so I'm using my own hand dyed yarn in my sock base, which is 75% um, merino and 25% nylon. I'm using this green and this um, purple color. And a couple episodes ago, I talked about um, knitting purple socks for my dad. This is what was left over. And I thought, well, what better way to use it than in another pair of socks? So I am knitting, um, let me get, this is the second set. Okay, here's the first sock that I did. I did my normal toe where I cast on 24 stitches divided up against um, three um, DPNs that are size two. Um, and then once I reached my increases, I started the pattern on both sides. And I did have to modify um, for my size, I added another repeat of the patterning on the front. Um, the back was easy to do because it's just knit one, knit one, knit one, knit one. You, um, you just change colors every stitch. So that was easy. The front is where you have to focus on the, cause every row is different. Now I did my normal heel, which is the shadow wrapped heel. And I just stayed in pattern for the bottom. And, um, and then I continued the, the stripe pattern up the back instead of doing the front pattern also on the back. And, um, it, it, um, it, it said to do that. So I followed the pattern that way. Now the, the heel, once I finished my ribbing and bound off, I tried this sock on and it's snug in through the foot a little bit. I should have gone up maybe five or six stitches around in the foot. Um, but the heel, whew, it is so snug on my heel. Um, so I altered that for um, the second sock. And I just, uh, when it was time to start the heel, I just picked up and did one color, top and bottom. And then I've, 
oh yeah, I'm on the first round or I'm starting the second round since reconnecting to go in the round. Um, so now I'm picking up and doing the patterning again. I am going to do the, the different pattern on the front, the same, as well as the striped pattern up the back. I'm going to do that the same as well until I get to, there's a detail at the top. I don't know if you can tell, um, you know, a little bit here. And then I just did a two by two rib and the last two rounds plus then the bind off round, I did this, the green color again. Now, because I knit these one at a time, which I don't normally do, I normally knit two at a time. Even on DPNs, I will do a little bit of one toe and then another. And then when I'm doing the pattern up here, I'll do that um, consecutively. But I didn't do that with this. Um, so because I tried this on before I cast on this sock, I knew I needed more stitches around. Um, and that is actually pretty typical for color work socks and color work sweaters and color work hats is that you will need to either increase your, um, stitches by a few or go up a needle size. So I could have done either of those. I chose to add uh, five, four, four or five extra stitches. There's 72 total around here. And I think this was 68. 68 which is up for me for fingering weight socks. I would normally do like 62 for me normally. So 68 was an increase, but it wasn't enough of an increase. So this one is 72 and I can tell um, pulling on it that there's quite a bit more ease than the first sock. Um, now it was not enough to add another repeat. And if you look, you can see that on one side, there's more of the purple color than on this side. Um, but they're going to be in my shoes. <laughs> so I don't think it matters too much. Um, so that's kind of it for these. Again, these are the Hokey Pokey Socks by Drops Design. And I just printed the pattern off their website. They have a lot of free um, patterns. And they're pretty easy to do. Like I just, I did my normal toe. I, I did my normal um, cuff. And, um, you know, there are some, it, it's pretty, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, I think if you're an intermediate beginner, it's no problem for you to do color work socks. In fact, they're fun to do. I highly recommend doing them. In fact, in the next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about my future plans for knitting and the desire to knit a color work sweater. Won't that be fun? But first, let's talk about some spinning that I've done this week. I've been working on two projects. The first one is this um, Merino and Stellina in this very bright pink. Um, a couple of months ago, it might have been this spring actually, um, my son and I went to our local yarn shop, Paradise Fiber, and he picked out a grab bag which is basic, well, it's a mystery bag actually, um, which means you can't see what's inside. And in that were these two yarns, this one um, and then this interesting um, combo. So um, this is Merino and Stellina or Tinsel. And um, you can see the glimmer 
in, uh, that's the Stellina. I spun this as a single and then um, plied it together so it's a two ply yarn. And what I got was a bulky weight. And um, this came out to two ounces and 98 yards. Um, I used my spinning wheel and then I used a Nitty Naughty to wind it up into this hank. So this is probably enough to do a hat for a youth or baby, uh, definitely for a baby. Um, so, and maybe if I blended it, maybe if I used this for color work and used a main color, uh, that could be fun actually. So I might do that. Um, it's interesting because I will spin um, and a lot of spinners talk about how they don't use the stuff that they, the yarn that they've spun. I have used in the past, um, I've used my own hand spun yarn in projects. In fact, I made a hat and mittens for my son last year out of some hand spun. So um, it is, I, why wouldn't you use it? You made it. <laughs> um, but there are some like, I never would have picked this to spin myself. I would have picked either something that was neutral, like a gray, a cream, or a brown um, for myself. So um, trying to figure out how to use this, <laughs> we'll see. And I have a boy. So um, this really isn't his jam. <laughs> so maybe for um, uh, the babies being born this year, if there's some girls in our life. And we have a couple that, um, several people that are having kids. So um, I'll pray for a girl. <laughs> okay, the next project is um, this. And this, was all, this also came in the same grab, grab bag. And I would not have picked this either because the content is 100% silk. And I prefer wool um, and maybe cotton. Silk is just not my um, preferred content, um, fiber content. So I wouldn't have picked this, but I'm gonna do the best that I can. So what I did, I got, um, you got two little bags and um, it came in this orange color and then the, the white color. And um, what I am doing is I am spinning this single and then I will ply it back on itself in a two ply. And I'm probably going to get worsted to bulky. Um, I have never spun um, I have never spun this um, fiber before, and so the silk. So it's pretty slippery, and then it doesn't, and maybe I'm doing something wrong, which is highly possible. It, um, it doesn't draft. Like if I go to draft it, it just comes apart. And so I didn't do any pre-drafting. I just was drafting as I was spinning. And so there's parts of it where it's like super thin, um, almost lace weight, if not lace weight. And then other parts where it's like DK. <gasps> uh, so I'm really hoping that with doing two ply, it will kind of even out those bits a little bit. I'm not sure what I would knit with this. Um, maybe a hat, a silk hat. Um, I'm not sure. The other thing is, is I am spinning um, a section of the gold and then I'm breaking that off or it breaks off and I add in a section of the white. So it will be a little bit um, 
like when I'm when I'm playing it back on itself, there'll be some where it's gold on gold and then gold on white and then white on white and white on gold. You know, so it'll be a little, um, I don't know. What do they call that? It has a name. Um, not marled. <sighs> anyway, Spin Cycle is a very popular um, brand of yarn that they do that a lot and I can't think of it. I'll put it here if I look it up, if I remember to look it up. So I still have a little bit of the gold and a little bit of the white. So I'm going to continue adding that until it's gone. And then I will be two plying that back up. So I'll have that to show next time. Um, other than that, those are my two um, spinning items. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about future plans. I'm going to post a few pictures here as I'm talking and um, maybe it will get you inspired. <laughs> um, I would like to do a color work sweater uh, for my next project. And these uh, couple that I'm showing you are ones that I'm really interested in doing. Um, I have never done a large color work project. I, I Socks and hats that's, and mittens, socks, hats, and mittens is what I've done for color work. So I would like to do something bigger. They look really nice. They look really classy. And um, uh, there's a lot of different style yokes, which I'm interested in doing. I generally do, this style is called raglan. Um, I generally do raglan. Um, I think I've done one drop shoulder um, and a lot of color work sweaters are yoked sweaters, which means you kind of work it in a big round and then you flop it over and, um, add the sleeves and knit the body. So I've never, I don't know how those would fit me. Um, so, uh, I do like the raglan cause they're pretty classic and they always fit really nice, um, and look really nice on. So, um, but I'm interested in trying, giving it a try. So, um, another thing that, um, I would like to do and that I'm planning ahead for is... Advent. I know Christmas, but we're into September and I kind of need to think about it. Um, I have ordered an Advent calendar from Nitty McPurley and um, I'm excited to do that, open those up and um, see, I guess we're doing ornaments, so that'll be fun. Um, another one that I think that I'm going to do is pick, um, I'll go online. I don't know that I've seen my experience with this and the mystery bag is I like to know what I'm spinning because then I'm more likely to use it. Um, so I thought I would go online and buy a couple braids of fiber and um, then do a little spinning vlog or spinning uh, advent, a spinning advent uh, also for December. So. My goal is to do a vlog, vlogmas style, all of December until Christmas. So you can watch for that in uh, December. And um, yeah, I'm having fun planning it. So uh, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be fun. <laughs> I watch them. I watch a couple people that do them and they, they always look uh, interesting and homey and they kind of help get me into the whole spirit of Christmas and just that homey family feel um, where you're doing things together and you're baking cookies and you know you're hunting the Christmas tree in the forest and um, all those types of things um, help to uh, make, thing, make Christmas fun uh, for the whole month 
and it's uh, you know I still have a 10 year old at home so it's a lot of fun and involvement for him um, and he enjoys every moment of it because he he loves to party <laughs> party or events or anything like that cookie making um, hiking through the woods for a tree right up his alley <laughs> so um, yeah so that's it for that watch for it in December Okay, I think that's it for this week. I hope you guys are having a lovely day and a lovely week, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. I'll see you in a couple weeks with another episode. I do have a bonus episode coming up on Sunday that is a wrap up to the Carter that my dad and I built last year. I finally finished piecing together all the video that I recorded for the final episode. So you can check that out on um, this Sunday, the 28th. Have a great day and I'll see you in a couple weeks.